Welcome to Keyence's first time setup guide for the GC Series safety controllers. In this video, I'll cover an overview of the GC's role in a safety system, introduce the general flow of programming a GC1000 controller, and then walk through the process with you. If you're rushed for time, use the video progress bar on the bottom to skip to the part of the video you are interested in. The GC Series is our lineup of safety controllers so it can monitor the state of safety inputs, perform logic based off of those safety inputs, and send control outputs based off of the logic. First off, you'll need the GC Configurator software, which is free to download from our website. I'll put a link in the description of this video. Then you need to connect the GC to the computer. I'm gonna use a USB cable with a MIDI-V connector, but if you have the GC1000, not the GC1000R, you can also use an ethernet cable. You're gonna need the software to create a program and transfer it onto the GC. Once we open the GC configurator software, it'll ask us if we want to read out the settings of a GC connected to the computer, if we want to create a brand new configuration file, which we'll do today, or if we want to open a configuration file that's stored somewhere on the computer's files. We can also start monitoring or read out the history directly from the screen as well once you have set up the GC. If you're using a GC1000, so not the GC1000R, you can opt to connect via Ethernet and set that up with this button. I will be using USB and I'll create a new configuration file. This is a screen where I can identify the hardware that I'm going to be using. So I'm going to be using a GC1000, not the GC1000R. And if I have any expansion modules or remote I.O. modules connected, I can go into the unit settings. I can either read out everything if it is powered up and connected. Otherwise, I can manually configure what expansion units I'm using and what remote I.O. modules I'm using. Currently, I'm just going to pretend that I have none connected. I'll delete those out. I'm going to be using standard mode instead of easy mode. I would recommend easy mode to people who have never programmed a controller before, but otherwise, for, I typically recommend using standard mode. You can name the file here and leave any comments, and then press OK. This launches us into the settings side of the software, which consists of configuring any input or output devices, programming any of the logic the controller needs to perform, and then transferring it over. Starting in the configuration tab, you can see on the left you have a big list of pretty much devices. And these are your input devices and your output devices. You can kind of treat this like shopping. So if you're thinking about the machine that you might be using the GC on, you can just double click for each device that you have there. So I've got an e-stop push button that I'll be using, a reset push button that I'll be using, and a pair of GLR light curtains. That's all that I'll be using from the input devices. And now I need to add my output devices, which can send control outputs or uh, status outputs. I'll be using a set of the safety output terminals to control an external relay. And I'll also be using an auxiliary output, which will turn on an indicator whenever I'm waiting on my e-stop to be reset with the push button. One thing that I always make sure to do here is actually rename all of my devices. This is a personal preference, but it makes me uh, makes it easier for me to look at an input block and know with 100% certainty what I'm uh, messing with at that moment. All right, that's good enough for now. Next, you need to tell the GC how every input or output device is going to be connected. So if you click on any of these icons, you will see the options for that type of input device. For my e-stop, I can have it connected either to the terminal block on the front of a GC unit or to a remote I.O. module, that M12 five pin quick disconnect. I'm gonna keep everything with the terminal block except for my light curtains, which I will be using the GC link port connection. That's the quick disconnect cables, so no wiring involved with that type of connection. To assign the terminals, so you need to tell the GC where that device is going to be connected and the terminal strip, you can go device by device 
and select the terminals where you'll connect it. But one thing, if you have not done any of the wiring yet, I recommend opening up the terminal assignment, select all unassigned devices, and just automatically assign. For five devices, it doesn't make a huge impact, but if I have 10, 15, 20, you know, that might save me a few minutes of just laboriously clicking. The last thing I'll point out on the screen is that for the e-stop, for example, maybe I'm using a single channel versus a, a dual channel e-stop, or maybe I want to use test outputs versus 24 volts to source that e-stop. I can make all those selections here just by clicking on this icon. I'll move over to the program tab. And this little pop-up menu is just saying, hey, do you want me to drag out all of your input and output devices for you? I'll say, sure, why not? Now that we're in the program side, you'll see on the left that there's another big list, the top of which you find your input blocks and your output blocks. I'll minimize these since they've already been dragged out by the software. And then you will see your function blocks. This is a function block based software. So any logic that you program will be using these. And so there's some simple ones like logic, ands and ors, uh, your reset function, and then some more application specific blocks as you go further down. Whenever I get into the actual programming here, so in the, the middle of the screen, I typically start by saying, okay, which devices are going to be an automatic reset and which devices are going to be a manual reset. So for manual reset, I'm actually gonna want this e-stop and its reset push button to provide the manual reset function. And this GLR, I actually want it to automatically reset if it gets tripped. To force the e-stop to be a manual reset, I go over to my reset function block and drag it out. Now, if I want to learn about this function block, I can right click on it and go into the detailed settings. There's two ways that I can learn about it. The first is sort of hands-on. So I can click on the simulation button and you'll see these nodes become larger and I can actually click on them to toggle the input device and click on the reset to toggle the reset function. Right? And now my output bit toggles on and off. So you can get a feel for how it's going to react whenever certain things turn on and off and how the output is affected hands-on with the simulation. When I exit and click on help, I can also open up the literature from the function block user's manual. All right. And we can see here that this opened up the relevant part of the function block user's manual to learn about what that reset block does by default and the extra functions that I can use. We'll see here that I actually have a reset required output that I will take advantage of here shortly. I'm going to exit out of these detailed settings and just connect my e-stop by clicking on the little red square and then click again on the input of that function block. Click on my reset, click on the reset node. Now I'm ready to tie the output of this function block to my safety output, but I also want my relay, or sorry, my light curtains to control that. I can't have both of them going there at the same time. So what I need to use is use this and block here. So I say if my reset tied to my e-stop is happy, and if my curtains are happy, then I can toggle my safety output. Now what I've forgotten about here is my reset required status indicator. To add this functionality to the reset block, I can go into the detailed settings and say use reset required output. This is going to add a node that I can then tie to my output that will turn on whenever the reset is or the reset function is waiting on that reset button to get pressed. I'm really done programming now, but what I always do before I transfer it over to the GC is to simulate and make sure that the function is as I intended. So by clicking on any of these input devices, you can simulate them going from a safe condition to an unsafe condition or press versus not press. My curtain and e-stop are safe. The GC tells me that I'm waiting for a reset input and my reset required indicators currently on. As soon as I pulse the reset button, then everything goes green. The e-stop is manually reset. All the curtain is automatically reset. So I'm happy with this uh, operation. So I'll finish my simulation 
and then click on transfer to send this program over to my GC1000. You can press yes to save it on your computer. I'll press no. And then you transfer this over to the GC. Now I don't have a GC1000 connected right now, but if I did, it would ask for me to enter a password, which is a default 1111. And then I would have to scroll to the bottom of a settings report and press accept. And then the transfer will take place and I'll be able to set my GC to run mode.